Hey everyone, welcome back to Epic Cars, and on today's episode, um, I'm going to show you what uh, pain looks like. So yeah, uh, when you're raising a car lift, uh, pay attention to where the hydraulic line is uh, because the hydraulic line got caught under one of the cleats on the end of this, uh, this lift and as it was raising up, it broke, uh, you know, split the, split the hose basically, and that happened. Um, nice, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Again, kind of my luck, the way things go. Uh, when you're a car guy, you've got a you got a kind of plan in your head as this is what's going to happen today, and uh, God has a funny way of uh, saying no, we're going to do something different, and so stuff like that happens. But today, um, I was basically getting the uh, Hummer on a lift, and so I'll play this little montage. And so I got it on the lift, raised it up, you saw what happened, uh, so I spent the rest of the afternoon cleaning that up. Um, bad, really bad part about it was that my window on the driver's side was down um, and some got in the interior and so I spent the, the rest of the day basically uh, trying to clean up the seats and the console and the steering wheel and the dash and it went everywhere. Um, Good thing is, and I and I don't know yet. I've got to call into the manufacturer of this lift, but it didn't seem like it was hydraulic oil. I mean, hydraulic oil to me in the past has has always had kind of a red color to it or a yellow color to it. Uh, this was crystal clear, um, and it's almost like it was mineral oil or something. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, and praying that uh, the manufacturer gets back to me and says, "Oh yeah, we just put mineral oil in that uh, to use as hydraulic fluid." I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what it that's what it looked like guys um, And so luckily it cleaned up really well on the inside Hopefully it just kind of moisturized the seats for me because uh, those are leather seats But I do have it all over the outside of this car. So uh, I'm gonna have to get it washed I wiped it off as best as I can, but it's got kind of this little film now just all over the car So I'm gonna have to put some soap and water to it and see if I can get that off But on today's episode, I'm gonna dive further into the engine issue Definitely when I start up the car, uh, for about the first two or three minutes, I don't hear a knock. Um, and then it starts knocking, and it starts knocking, and it changes with the RPM, which makes me believe uh, that I've either got a rod uh, that's either broken, I, I doubt that, uh, or I've got a rod bearing uh, that's going out on me. Um, and then it does this other weird thing where it'll be running, and uh, at idle, and then it'll start idling really weird, the, the, the noise gets a little bit louder, um, and then it just shuts off. Uh, it, I mean, it won't, it won't stay running. I can restart it, um, and sometimes it starts right back up. Sometimes it takes a little bit uh, to get started, runs for, I don't know, 15 seconds or so, 20 seconds or so, 30 seconds or so, and then just stops running. Um, so again, it kind of led me to believe, okay, maybe I've, I really got something going on with my crankshaft, my pistons, you know, it's obviously uh, knocking pretty good there. Um, but then I did a little bit more research and found out that there's a camshaft position sensor uh, on the front of the engine, and there's actually two. There's an intake side and an um, exhaust side. And uh, what finally led me to that, not only had I done some research, but I finally started to get a check engine light on this. Uh, for the entire time I've owned it, since I bought it at Copart, the entire dash has been clear. There's no been no check engine lights, no dummy lights, no nothing. Um, when I ran a uh, uh, diagnostic tool on it, nothing came up. I replaced the battery, I put a brand new battery in it, uh, and then start, things started kind of appearing. 
Uh, first and foremost, the radio came on, which is great because it's a it's a really nice aftermarket radio, touchscreen, and it's Bluetooth, and it's really a nice radio. Again, the interior of this vehicle is is phenomenal. I mean, it's just got everything. You could tell someone uh, really took good care of this car, uh, whoever had it before me. Um, but so got the battery in, and then sure enough, I'm starting it and, and stopping it. I actually drove it around. I drove it around in the field a little bit, put it in four wheel drive worked great other than that knocking uh, went up a couple of hills and four-wheel drive and so forth so everything seems to be checking out as far as the differential um, or differentials uh, and the um, the four-wheel drive system works great shifts in and out great no problem but when I get it back up here you know I put the new battery in shut it off and then turn it back on and I was just kind of testing things on the diagnostic tool and it would keep dying on me and finally on about oh I don't know Probably the 15th or 20th time that I've started the vehicle and let it run, finally a uh, check engine light came up. So at that moment, I put the uh, diagnostic tool on it, and it was saying camshaft position sensor bank one, um, if I remember right. And I think if I, if, if in looking back at the, the codes and so forth, it looks like that that's the intake side of the um, uh, camshaft position sensor. So what I went ahead and did is I, I jumped out on Amazon and I'll put the link below to the to these exact uh, parts that I got uh, and ordered went ahead and got the intake and the exhaust side. Basically they're little magnets uh, that go into uh, an outlet and then obviously this feeds into your computer. Uh, what's interesting is, is the last few cars that I've had, I've had this kind of issue. Uh, if you go back and watch my Old Bones episode, it's just linked up above, uh, part of the issue that I had with the transmission shifting wrong was an input speed sensor. Uh, and it looked identical, almost identical to this th this piece right here. And so again, just a little magnet magnet that something happens inside and it you know it, it uh, conducts you know a signal, sends it to the computer and tells, hey, the the, the transmission is in this position, sh so it should be in this gear or it's spinning this quickly. Uh, so it should be in this gear, first, second, third, fourth, and so forth. Now with the camshaft position sensor, my understanding is it does basically the same thing. It's just communicating back and forth to the computer system uh, that, hey, you had the intake side, uh, you know, go by, uh, and therefore, you know, it's sending a signal to the computer uh, to then, you know, send power and fuel to the cylinders and ignite certain cylinders. Um, in this inline five, and then of course the exhaust side does the same thing. A again, that's not exactly how it works, but the basic gist of how it works. Uh, so these together were right around forty dollars on Amazon, uh, and so we're going to put them in today and see if it stops the stalling issue. I think it will. Um, the knock that could be that could be another issue, but I'm prepared for that too. Okay, so I'm pointing at it right here. That's the intake side of the camshaft sensor, and then if I move over here you can see that's the exhaust side of the sensor. So right here at the, at the front of the engine, really easy to get to. So I figured I'd go ahead and replace those because that seems to be a, a common problem on these inline five engines. Uh, and a, definitely the engine is throwing a code uh, for I believe this one um, for sure. And so, you know, might as well change them out while I'm here. It's one, uh, that's probably, I don't know, maybe a 10 millimeter bolt right there. It's one bolt to take off there. Unplug the harness, plug it in, you're good to go. This one's a little bit more difficult to get to because the the, um, the actual bolt's kind of behind there, but that's, again, not a big deal. So we should have this out in a jiffy. Okay, so just because I'm curious, um, obviously I, you know, I was picking up the code that it was the intake side, so I just changed that out. As you can tell, pretty easy process, really. I mean, the hardest part's just getting the kind of the device off the actual uh, harness itself, but um, a little bit of oil and stuff like that. But on a on a scale of one to ten, it's definitely a one. Um, but I just I'm curious to see if it's going to make a difference because uh, I just changed out the one, and that's what the code was saying. It didn't have two codes. And so I'm just going to start it up, see what happens, uh, and we'll see if it fixed it. So you can 
see it, you can hear the knocking. Right now it started immediately. Usually it doesn't do this until it's cold. Or until it's warmed up a little bit. Gotta figure that out. It's some crazy sound that the radio makes when you change the volume. It's really, really loud. I don't know if you can hear that. That's really loud. Okay, it seems to be idling a little bit better. We'll see if it dies. Check engine light's still on. But I, I, I've, in reading, I've heard that you got to cycle it through, I don't know, three or four times, and then the check engine finally goes off. And once the computer's heard that the signal or seen that the signal is not coming anymore, uh, it takes a little while to cycle on and off uh, for us to make a decision. Again. It's kind of idling down there. You can really hear that. Pretty sure I got a rot bad rod bearing. The good thing is it's not dying anymore. I'm gonna let that run and take you guys up to the engine. What's interesting, guys, is that sounds like it's on the top of the engine. It sounds like it's coming from right here. It definitely does not sound like a bottom end issue. And it feels like it's right here. It literally feel I can. It feels like it's right there on top of the engine. I don't know what's underneath here, guys. I'm assuming camshafts and stuff, but I, I just don't know much about this engine, so. I'm gonna take the oil cap off and see what I can hear. Definitely got some oil fumes. It's almost like if you do this on a diesel engine and you have a bunch of oil, or excuse me, a bunch of smoke coming out of your oil filler, it's, all, it's like you got blow by. Now you can hear it, it's gotten a lot quieter. It's not so loud. Let me rev it up for you guys. Well, okay, so there we go. There it died, guys. Okay, so I was uh, I was revving it up. You guys heard me, and then it just died. Um, so, it makes me think that uh, even though it was telling me it was this inside, or the intake side of the uh, camshaft sensor, I'm going to obviously go ahead and change out the exhaust side and see if it makes a difference. Um, don't know if it will, but we're going to try it. And, of course, now the engine's warm, and I get to put my hand down by the exhaust manifold. So, hmm, smart thinking, Eric. But that's what extensions are for. So, and gloves if I, have, if I need it. out pretty easy and uh, now it's just basically using a screwdriver let me get my got some exhaust uh, smoke coming out so definitely on the exhaust side <laughs> so again it you know I don't know if you can tell if it's good or bad but uh, got a lot of oil on it so we will put the new one in now I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to the harness first. All right, I got it popped in. There's my bolt. Put my light field down here again, and it is very warm right here. Okay, got it in. Kind of a hard place to get to, especially when it's really hot like this. Um, there's a, basically this top radiator hose goes down into Looks like where the uh, thermostat plenum is going into the in intake uh, side of the engine or the top of the engine and uh, it is very, very warm. 
All right, so I got it started. Oh, that intake is, that manifold's hot too. Wasn't run up very long, but I'm, I'm in a garage here. I've got a fan going above to try to give it a little bit of airflow. All right, got it snugged down. So, let's turn this thing back on again and see what happens. It's got a very nice detailed leather front seat if you know what I mean from the fluid don't tell my daughter Ooh, that's not a good sign so I started it up and it just immediately died really rough idle died again A little bit of gas. Well, that's weird. Okay, so I changed out the intake and the exhaust side. That was throwing the code. Hmm. Maybe it's just the computer's not recognizing that it's fully functioning yet, so I'm going to keep cycling it. That ain't good. You hear that start? Really rough start. Okay, there it did something by itself. It, it throttled up to about a thousand RPMs. Now it's just a little bit under a thousand. I went ahead and turned the AC on because it's hot. So now it's about 900 RPMs. Look at that, check engine lights off, and it's running great. How about that? Now, of course, check engine light goes off and it dies. You heard that start, that wasn't good. Check engine lights off still. Down to about 800 RPMs. Now it's going down, going down. Oh, got down to 500. Oh, it's 500, 800, 500, 800. It's bouncing back and forth. I'm not doing anything to the accelerator. Check engine light's still off. It's just bumping back and forth between about 500 and 600. It's almost like it's a fuel supply problem. That's what it sounds like. I don't know if you can see this, guys, but the car's like shaking. And it feels like it's about to die. Obviously, the knock's a little bit less loud because the RPM is so low. So it's right around 500 RPMs. Running really bad. Running real rough. Whoa. I don't know what it's doing now. It's going down to like 400 and bouncing back and forth. I'm going to give it some gas to see what happens. And it just dies. Hmm. It's almost like it's got a fuel supply problem. Um, I don't know how old the gas is in the tank. I don't know how long it's been sitting, but it couldn't have been for very long. Uh, I went ahead and put a couple of fresh gallons in uh, the other day. Um, I mean, maybe it's got a fuel pumps going bad or something, or. Started right back up, no check engine light still. Nothing showing up on our code. It's running better right now. It's about 800 RPMs. Oh, check engine lights back on. Runs real smooth, throttle's real responsive. And then it dies on you. 
Hmm. Okay, guys, so uh, I went ahead and put my uh, diagnostic tool back on it. I've got code P0017, which is crankshaft position, camshaft position correlation, bank one sensor B. Um, I'm almost positive this is the exact same code that I had the other day. So I'm going to go ahead and keep cycling it. Uh, again, I read on some of the forums that you've got to cycle it uh, several times for it to kind of get the computer to figure out what's going on. Uh, so I'm going to keep cycling it and see what happens. Alright guys, so I went ahead and cycled it through. Uh, check engine light went off again. Uh, oh, I'm messing with the seat. Something was making a noise. Um, it went off again and then uh, it came back on again. Um, then it went, I cleared it. I manually cleared it with my tool here. Um, and then it immediately went into a yellow warning which says pending fault code. And so if you go in and you go to the, the, uh, the uh, menu and say pending, show me pending codes, uh, it's still popping up that same P0017 uh, crankshaft position camshaft position correlation bank one. Um, which is interesting. Now that I keep reading that over and over again, I've got a crankshaft position, camshaft position correlation. It's like the camshaft is messed up. And you know that 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 sound that's coming from the engine is on the top end of the engine. It's not on the bottom. Uh, but could it be something to do with the camshaft? It's saying camshaft position correlation, bank one sensor B. So I'm gonna have to look into this. Um, so uh, I don't know if this is a very exciting video for you guys, uh, but at least it's, I'm showing you kind of what's going on. And if anything, you can laugh at the hydraulic fluid going all over when I broke that pipe or broke that hose um, not really not really funny on my side but uh, so that's this week's update got problems uh, anybody got any suggestions man put them in the comment section I'd love to hear from you let me know I'm obviously gonna spend some time looking it up on the web and see what I can find out man if I can get out of this thing with maybe just a camshaft issue is that better than rebuilding the whole bottom end um, probably maybe a little easier I mean I was I was prepared to go ahead and take the oil pan off uh, check the bearings out on the rods and go ahead and change those out uh, from the bottom with this lift you know it's easy to do that um, so m now more than likely it's gonna be top end work um, and again I don't know if I can get this maybe I can buy a top end assembly for this engine rather than having to buy obviously the entire core and everything all together maybe I can just buy the intake uh, maybe I can do that maybe it's a lot cheaper to do that and maybe that's gonna solve my problem uh, don't know yet uh, so if you got any comments let me know guys thanks for watching God bless and take care